Welcome back to another SAP Tech Bytes in this series where we are looking at the newest HANA Cloud and Cloud Application Programming Model tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to use SAP HANA Cloud to create a calculation view and then expose that calculation view as part of your SAP Cloud Application Programming Model. So up to this point, we've built a pretty robust little application. We've got our data model, we've got our service layer, we've got our user interface, we've got real security uh, in place. But what we haven't done is we haven't really done any HANA native development and pulled in the specific capabilities of HANA. We use the abstracted approach with CDS and the Cloud Application Programming Model. What I wanna show you in this tutorial is how to combine HANA native artifacts like calculation views with SAP Cloud programming, uh, Cloud application programming model concepts. So you're going to learn the basics of creating a HANA native artifact within a Cloud application programming model project. You're going to learn how to create HANA calculation views specifically in this tutorial and how to integrate HANA native artifacts like the calculation view we're going to create into the cloud application programming model so it can be served out via the same OData service. Now, this tutorial is designed for SAP HANA Cloud and does not match up to SAP HANA On-Premise or SAP HANA Express Edition. And this tutorial assumes that you have created, at least created the database artifacts and loaded them with data as explained in the previous tutorials, although you may have skipped the tutorial groups that had to do with authentication and adding the user interface, that's okay, that's optional. Um, but I will, I have done that in, as I've gone through all the tutorials, so you will see those aspects in, in the video. Now, within the um, SAP Cloud Application Programming Model and its implementation of Core Data Services, or CDS, we don't directly import a calculation view or other native database artifacts. Uh, this import, however, is important if we want to be able to expose these other types of artifacts via OData v4, because really, excess OData is now uh, obsolete and CAP OData is the main way to expose anything from, uh, from the HANA world via OData. So that really requires us to be able to bring that uh, HANA native artifact into the CDS world. Now, CDS does have an annotation called at cds.persistence.exist. And this annotation allows you to redefine an existing database artifact and CDS won't attempt to create or alter it. It'll just assume that it already exists in a matching state in the database. Now, this feature does require that you to completely redefine the database artifact with the same name and columns and, and column names. So in this exercise, we're gonna see how we can create a calculation view and then expose it to CDS using this technique to kind of create a proxy entity that matches up. Now, for more details on advanced features around this technique, such as using parameters or quoted names, also refer to the documentation uh, on cap.cloud.sap.com that's linked into the tutorial. So step one, we want to start by creating our calculation view. So calculation views and other HANA native artifacts allow you to leverage HANA specific features and optimizations that might not otherwise be available at the abstraction layer within the cloud application programming model. And calculation views are especially good at aggregation and filtering of large data sets. So in this exercise, we wanna create a simple join calculation view based upon uh, our small data set and data model that we created earlier. And this is done so that we can focus on the mechanics of combining HANA native with CAP without needing uh, a, a typical large data set that would be a value uh, where calculation views would be a value. Um, uh, but, you know, don't let that throw you off. We, we've kept the data set small just to make it very manageable to do the exercise. 
no creating a calculation view on top of a table that only has four or five records isn't necessary but it lets us show you the mechanics of what you would use if you had you know hundreds of thousands or millions of rows uh, all, all the mechanics that we're going to go through would be the same so we want to create a calculation view uh, and we're going to do that by using the uh, command palette so we're going to do view find command and I'm just going to type HANA here like we did with the Fury commands earlier. And I'm going to get all the HANA commands that are available. I'm going to say HANA create HANA database artifact. And this is going to start a wizard that's going to help us create our database artifact. First thing, you want to make sure you're in the right project. Because sometimes when you run the wizard, if you bounce between projects, it might actually be pointing to a different project. So just... Make sure that you got the right project name in here. You can always use the browse to, to find the right one. And make sure you're in DB source within that project, because that's where we want to generate our content. Yes, we are using SAP HANA Cloud. You have to say what type you, of object you want to create, and we want to create a calculation view. And then you got to give it a name. I'm going to give it a name of V interaction. You can give it a label. I'll, I'll just leave the label the same. And we're going to create a dimension calculation view um, and just keep the dimension type as standard. So go ahead, go ahead and say create. And take a second. It says it's been created. It does not open automatically. That throws some people off. They expect it to open in the editor automatically. But we see here under DBSRC, we have our HDB calculation view. It's separated from all our generated artifacts, which will be in this gen folder. That way, if we run a CDS build, it doesn't overwrite anything that we create manually. We have them separately uh, in separate folders. So here's our calculation view. Um, a little odd that it asked me that, but that's okay. Standard dimension. I thought I chose all that already. I'm going to say create, and there it is. That's what I expected to see there is the uh, layout I like the expanded, I don't know, by, I don't do a ton of calculation views myself. I don't know all the little icons by heart. So you can use that little expansion, and, and then you see the descriptions of the various icons of, of different node types and things that you can put in your calculation view. So now we're ready for step two, which is to model our join relationship. So to do that, we want to take a join node, and we just want to drag it onto the canvas. There we are, there's a join node. Now we want to add data sources to our join node. So I can go ahead and click the plus. Now one thing I'll point out, if you do this and it doesn't find any data sources, it probably means your authentication has maybe timed out to, uh, to Cloud Foundry. And unfortunately, you just get like a, a nasty little error message or table not found. You know, if it's been a day, and maybe you started the tutorial, you stopped overnight, and you picked back up the next day, well, come down here and, and click on the targeting CF and, and log in again just to make sure that, that you're authenticated and, that, uh, and avoid any problems, particularly if you do this step and then you don't see any tables. But I know I'm still logged in. I'm doing all these uh, tutorials back-to-back -back here in one afternoon. It hasn't been long enough for me to lose my authentication. So I'll just go ahead and say Add Data Source. And I want to add my header table. So I'll just type header. And there it is. There's the header table, and I'll select it and say finish. So I added the header table, and if this is not white enough for you to be able to see, here, uh, I like to be able to see the header name there at the end. Now repeat that process, adding a data source, just this time let's add item. And there's our items table. You can also notice the icon is different than these views that are generated um, by the OData service. So we want the table. So I'll choose items. There we are. Now what we want to do is we want to create the join. So just double click on the join node and it'll bring up the join editor here. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Oh. One, two, there you are clearly show you that header items, two separate nodes, two separate boxes. And we have a common ID here that is the key. 
we just select that column of ID, we take the little arrow and we drag it to INT header ID. That's going to be, that was our association. So that's also our join condition here. And we can change the cardinality because it's not a many to many. We know for every one header, there's multiple items. So it's a one to many relationship. There we are. And then we can go to the mapping tab. And basically we want to take all the columns of the header. And you can just select the header and say add to output. And it adds all those. And then we want to take the text ID, the language, and the log text. We don't need to repeat the header. It would just be redundant since that's the same data in both what we're joining on it. So we'll take all the columns except that, and we'll add that to the output as well. Now we want to make this the source of our projection. So we'll just take this node, take the little arrow to connect this. We'll drag it up to the projection. And once it's in our projection, what you have is you have the ability to also choose what, what fields come out of the projection. We could reduce fields or add calculated columns or things at this level. We're not gonna, we're not gonna get that sophisticated. We're just gonna take all of our fields and we'll add them to the output again. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save our view. There we are. And I'm gonna make this a little bigger here. So what we wanna do is we wanna deploy this into the database. So I'm just gonna hit the rocket again here. That's sending it all into the database. And what you saw, it's done. It sent the calculation view into the database and it deployed it successfully. We want to test this. We can go ahead into the database explorer. Here we are in the database explorer. Close that stuff that I had open earlier. And you won't find the calculation view under views you'll find it under column views. We'll come here to column views and there's V interaction. And I can just right mouse click and choose open data. And this will give us, uh, it gives us the ability to do this nice analysis with the charts and graphs. But for our purposes, we have a small amount of data. We can just come here to the raw data and we can see our data is being joined. We're getting header data and, and item data uh, put together here in, in one view. Once again, small data set, doesn't really need a calculation view, but lets us show the mechanics, particularly of now of how to integrate this into the cloud application programming model. So step three, creating the calculation view proxy entity. What we wanna do now is expose this calculation view to the cloud application programming model by creating what I call a, a proxy entity or like a, like a pseudo phantom entity um, inside the CDS data model. And it isn't something that CDS is actually gonna create in the database because it already exists, but we need it to be exposed to CDS so it knows about it as well. So what we can do here is go to our DB and go back to our interactions CDS. And uh, we need this proxy entity. But in order to do that, we don't want the namespace to be applied to it. So what we're going to do is we're, we're actually going to make some changes here. We're going to take the namespace off. But then we're going to come here to everything we've modeled already. And we're going to add a context. And this is basically like adding a namespace but to just part of your application. So everything else is gonna stay the same, but it's gonna allow us to create a proxy entity for our calculation view that doesn't have the namespace applied to it, okay? Next, we're gonna need a matching entity to the calculation view. And this means redefining all the column names and data types and lengths. Now we could do this manually, but it would be error prone um, and luckily, we don't have to do it manually because the HANA CLI tool that we've used earlier for some nice little utilities also has something to help us with this. It will generate the proxy for us. 
So I can just say HANA CLI, say inspect view, dash V, and then give it the view name, interaction, and then dash O for output, and tell the type of output that we want, we want it in CDS format. We hit enter, and that went and read all the metadata of that calculation view and generated a CDS equivalency to that. So now we can come here and we can just add this to the end of our file and it has the annotation and everything. It says this is going to tell CDS, don't actually try to create this thing. It already exists, but you are now aware of an entity named V interaction uh, that has these columns with these data types and links. Now, the other thing that we can do here, this is a relatively recent feature, is you can actually even tell CAP that this is a, not just that the persistence exists, but this is a CAP view. And that's important if you have parameterized calculation views. It would tell the cloud application programming model how to handle those. So we'll go ahead and tell it that it's a calculation view. Now we can go to the service layer. So let's just open interactions SRV and we can add it to our import so we can say using V interaction from DB interactions now that we've imported it in we can add it as an entity now it's a view so I want it to be a read only entity no reason to support Try doing create or update on it. And we'll just say entity v interaction. Interaction, that'd be the name of the entity. As projection on v interaction. All right. Format that so it looks nice. Save it. There we are. Everything saved. And what we want to do is we want to do a CDS build. So all this gets generated. CDS build. There we are. And although we didn't create any new database artifacts, some did get generated. Because every time we add something to the service layer, that creates views in HANA to be able to support uh, uh, handling that OData service. So what we do need to do is we need to deploy that into the database again to make sure that all those views get created. There we are. That's done. And now what we can do is we can test this again. So if we do a NPN start from the root of the project, and if you did all the authorization test, uh, what you're going to want to do is just like we did before, you're going to need to use the second terminal because otherwise you'll get a not authorized and go to app and do an NPN start there. Now, if you didn't do those tutorials and you want to test directly from the cloud application programming model, you can just launch the test page like we did before. But if you've added the additional authorization and you haven't taken it back out, then we still need to test via the application router, which is no problem. You just come here. And then we add catalog v interaction. And that is our calculation view being served out as an O data service. So now we have successfully combined HANA native artifacts with SAP Cloud Application Programming Model and learned the modern HANA way, HANA cloud way, to expose calculation views via OData, leveraging the SAP Cloud Application Programming Model.